Hey everyone, this is Kyle from Money at 30, and today I just wanted to give you a quick walkthrough of Adobe's InDesign, which is a program you can use to lay out your own self-published book. Now before we jump into this, I just want to mention that if you're looking online, you're probably going to come across a few message boards and other sites that suggest that beginners really shouldn't be using a program like InDesign, which is more geared towards professionals. Because if you don't know what you're doing, you could make some huge errors that could really hinder your book. I, I agree with that to a certain extent, but honestly, I was a total beginner a couple years ago when I laid out my own book. Um, I'm still consider myself a beginner, but this, what we're looking at right now is actually a spread I just designed for a friend of mine whose uh, book we're publishing together. And so I thought what might be a good idea is to walk you through exactly how I was able to design this using some very basic skills um, and let you decide for yourself whether InDesign is uh, the type of program you think you could learn and uh, could be an asset to your project. So the first thing I want to do is create a new document. So you just go to File, New, and then Document. You want to leave on the facing pages. That just means you have a left page, right page spread. And you also want to select this primary text frame option. Um, that'll become really important as I'll show you in a minute. And then you want to adjust your page width and height. So I'm going to do a six by nine book. And the reason it says 51 P is because it's actually in PICAs. But if you just do six and then put the quotes, it'll uh, convert it for you. And then before we actually finish this off, I just want to mention really quick about the gutter and the margins. Uh, this is one of the probably more important things you'll want to play with uh, when you go to lay out your book. Because if you ever look at a, pay a book page, there's actually several, a lot more white space than you might realize. Uh, for example, the gutter is re references this space right here. So if you have text, it's going to go all the way into the crease of the book. It's going to make it really hard to read. Uh, same thing with your margins. Um, in addition to maybe wanting to add headers and footers, people need a place to be able to hold the book without covering the text. So uh, definitely take the time to figure out what the right spacing for your book is. Uh, although for now, I'm actually just going to accept the uh, defaults. So now the first thing, I might as well start at the top here with this photo, which um, incidentally, if you look at some of the services that will lay out your book, they tend to charge you extra per image after a certain amount, which is pretty laughable once I show you how easy it is to do this. So you're going to want to first select this rectangle frame tool and then just start in the corner and uh, just draw whatever sort of rectangle you want there. Now, once you have this X in place, it's actually super easy to just grab the photo you want from your computer and you can literally drop it right on in. Now you'll see that looks a little bit more zoomed in than my finished product here. So let me show you how to fix that. You're going to go to this direct selection tool. And as you hover over your photo and you click on it, you'll see that this orange box is actually the size of your photo. So you can uh, move this around if you want. You can also shrink it a bit. But there's actually a better way uh, to get this done, especially if you're dealing with a really big image that you can't even get to the corners to of. So if you right click, you can go to fitting and then you want to do this one content fit content to frame and that will do exactly what it sounds like now you'll see this may looks slightly distorted just because the dimensions of the photo weren't the same as the frame so you can just uh, spread this out a little bit more if you want make it a little bit more natural looking so i'm just going to leave it like that for now so uh on my spread, you can see that I did some rounded edges here. I thought that'd be a nice design element. So that's actually super easy to do as well. If you just go to the selection tool and click on this, you'll see this yellow square pop up. And like it says, when you hover over it, if you click it, you can edit the corners. So then you'll see these four things. And if you hold down while you scroll over, you can make that rounding right there. You could go a little bit further if you really wanted, making it all the way, not quite to a uh, circle, but a, I don't know what you'd call that, I guess an oval almost. Uh, then you can zoom back out. I'm just going to leave it at about one, six ish. Yeah, right there is fine. All right, now that I have that in place, I'm going to go to my text and. Um, All right, now that I have that in place, I am going to uh, select my text and uh, it's going to hit enter until I get about to where I want with my cursor. All right, right there is good enough for now. 
So I'm going to select my first font, which is actually this Mona Lisa one. I'm going to center. This is where I'm going to create my uh, chapter heading. I'm going to make that a bit bigger. And then select the next one. I'm going to make this one a little bit larger. And if you want more space in between your uh, your different titles, you can tab down. And now that's a bit of big space. So if you want, you can just shorten that up by doing this. Because it's going to default, like when you hit a new one, it's going to take whatever you had on this line. So if you want to just make it smaller, then you can adjust it exactly how you want it. So now that I have those in place, the next step is to actually place my document. So ahead of time, I took each of my chapters from the book and separated them into their own Word files. And now that I've done that, I can just go to File, Place, and select my chapter. And when I hit Open, it'll go ahead and drop that all in. And now, since we already had text frames in place, uh, it should auto flow and create all your different pages for you, which is a really nice feature. Um, so I'm going to make a couple of changes to this text. The first one I'm going to do is to change up the font a little bit. Um, I actually have the right font type. I actually want to make it a bit bigger. So I'm going to select 12. And this will automatically adjust to the uh, size of your font. But I actually want a little bit extra room. So I'm going to actually bump this up to 15. All right, that looks pretty good. Now there is one more thing. I shouldn't have uh, deselected everything just yet. Um, this still has the ragged right, which is going to probably be the default when you're using a word processor. But I actually prefer for a book to justify it with the last line left. So there you go. So now I have this nice uh, squared off look, which I uh, think looks pretty good. Now, the next little design element I have is this large uh, letter to kick off the chapter. So that's actually another really easy uh, solution. So if you just select the line you want, these two uh, options over here will be how you control that. So the first one is how tall you want it to be. So this is two lines, three lines, and so on and so on. I'm actually going to just do three lines. And this one's going to be how many letters you want to include. So I'm just going to do one, but you can do, you know, entire words if you wanted. Um, but like I said, I'm just going to do one. And I notice that still looks a little bit different. And that's because I did something with this where I decided I wanted to actually uh, bring this down a line. So I just hit enter. And you'll see that now this is large as well because it still has the same settings. So if I just back this down to zero, now I have, it kind of starts in the middle of the, of the uh, big letter instead of all the way at the top. So I think that kind of looks pretty nice. So now we are pretty much done. You might want to fix a couple little things like uh, spacing, uh, make sure, yeah, so just go through your thing, make sure everything looks good. But for the most part, it's just smaller fixes. Um, actually, now that I see the, uh, one thing I can show you how to fix right here where you have the dash leading into another page that always bothers me i think it's kind of hard to read that way so to fix this you're actually going to select this paragraph styles up here and if you right click on normal and then edit normal you can select the hyphenation and deselect the hyphenate across column now you'll see when i enter that it found a way to fix it. So now swimming is up here instead. All right, so the last thing uh, to do really is these headers and footers. So for his, we decided we wanted to do the book title on this side and the uh, chapter title on this side and then page numbers at the bottom. So I'm gonna show you how to do all of that, but I am gonna condense it and uh, do something a little bit different. So if we go back to our pages, you'll see this A master if I click, double click on it, you'll see that I have a blank page with my thing, my headers. And then for the footers, there's just A's, which I'll explain in a minute. Um, then you'll also notice over on this panel, 
that there's these little A's in the corner of all the pages, which basically means that anything I edit on here, so if I were to uh, change this to just say LOL, now when I go to these pages, they'll all say LOL because I've adjusted the template. And you'll also notice that this one doesn't have any headers or footers because I didn't apply the template to it. If you want to, you can actually just drag this over and put it on top and now it will have the proper attributes. And if you want to take them away, just take this page that says none and drop it back over. All right, so let's make our own headers in this file now. So I'm going to go into my master and you're going to want to create a new text box, which you can do by just dragging um, right there. And if you're worried you don't have the right size, I like to kind of bring this down and adjust it so it's exactly flush and then put it back up. So I'm going to actually start with the page number, which you can get to by going to type, insert special character, markers, and then current page number. And that will give you that A that I was mentioning earlier. Uh, another cool little trick you can do is I'm going to put, instead of centering it like I did on the other design, I'm actually just going to put the book title all the way in the other corner here. And to do that easily, you can actually hit shift and tab, and then your cursor will actually go all the way to the other side. So now I can type in the uh, book name. I'm actually going to change the font really quick as well. And so then you can actually copy that, although I am going to uh, swap it to the other side. So if you wanted to, you could go through the whole type and then insert character and everything, or thankfully you can just copy and paste and it'll still work. So now I'll put the uh, chapter title. And now, when I go to my A, okay, so see, I want to take that off, so I'm just going to drag my non on there. And now you'll see page two, page three. And yeah, looks like it applied to all of them just fine. So as you can see, that didn't take me very long. It's going to be a little bit more difficult when you're designing something for the first time. You'll have a lot more to play with. So hopefully this gives you a nice overview of InDesign and how it can actually be pretty easy to use the basics to create uh, what I think is a halfway decent design, honestly, and also saves you a ton of money by not having to pay a professional or one of those services like CreateSpace. My best advice for these tutorials, like I understand that even this might have been a little bit overwhelming doing everything so quickly. So I would start with one thing you want to learn, one specific element you need to add to your file and learn. Well, look for a video specifically on that. Uh, and that way you can take all these building blocks and put it together in a way that hopefully will make your project look really great. So once again, I hope this is helpful to you and best of luck with your self-published project.